Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Mercedes C Class, the C200, the W206. And this happens to be the Avant Grey trim because I don't even know if I pronounced that right. But the AMG line is not available on the C200 and the C220 diesel. So you can see it does not get the body kit. It does not get that amazing grill. Neither does it get digital light. So first things first, let's open the engine bay of this vehicle, which means there's a lever which I need to pull and which is there it is. There is the engine. It's very silent and refined. There's insulation there, of course. But the lights are not the digital lights. These are LED high performance lights, which also get the job done, but doesn't look that flashy because the AMG line trim, which is available with the C300D, obviously sits lower, has bigger wheels as well. These are 17 inches, 225, 50, 17. So alloy wheel design is okay, fine. It's not that great. By the way, the car has become bigger when compared to the older C-Class. This one is 65 mm longer. The wheelbase has increased by 25 mm. It's wider by 10 mm. And at night, when you unlock the car, there is a light which comes out from here and projects the Mercedes logo right here. It actually looks like a baby S-Class. It's a fantastic design. No denying that fact. But you know what? There's no light show at night when you unlock the car. So the lights are very nice. And that is the indicator. This is the rear fog light. It is only there on one side. You get rear parking sensors, you get front parking sensors as well. Facile Khan's fingers of truth. Really disappointed with the fake exhaust stuff happening here. In fact, the real exhaust is placed right here. Okay, and it says C200. That's it. It doesn't have any badging of mild hybrid or stuff like that. Anyways, let's open the boot, which is very easy. I press this button. There opens the boot, which is not very usable. You know why? Because the spare wheel, which is a space saver, has been placed right on top. This is 455 liters, but not really usable. You pull this and there the seat reclines in 60-40 format. Let's shut this. The camera actually pops out from here. The reverse parking camera, of course. And there is a towing hook here. I honestly don't feel the car looks that great in this blue shade. Or probably it gets really dirty in the rain, of course. Let's get to the rear. Firstly, you've got a sun blind here, which is manually, you know, usable. And this floating treatment is really nice. Door pockets are also large enough. Let's put the seat back into place which means that I have to pull the seat belt and then push it. The thing is, legroom has increased by 21 mm. The seat is lower, but overall legroom and knee room is just about adequate. It's not that fantastic. This is not a chauffeur driven car for sure. Another thigh support isn't that great. Headroom, just about adequate for someone as tall as me. There's a hook here, there's a handle, there's a light, height adjustable seat belts. There's another hook here. You get AC vents here in the center. There's some storage space here as well. Some storage space here as well. But no charging socket, no AC controls, and you get a center armrest with cup holders. Press it once again, and there the cup holders come out. You know what? Everyone gets a head. Everything is adjustable here, which is fantastic, but this is not a chauffeur-driven car. There you can see the dashboard design well compared to the AMG line. Things are a bit different. Firstly, here you get beige treatment, even on the seats, almost everywhere. In the AMG line, you actually get brown treatment, and it's not completely brown. It's a mix of black and brown, which looks really very tasteful as well. Recline angle of the seat is nice, Isofix child seat mounts, of course, and you get dual roofs on the top, which you can only operate from the front, that is, and easy to adjust this also, here you see, yep, that can be done. You get a sun blind here, which is easy to operate because the controls are here on the driver's side and when you, you know, open the door at night, this actually illuminates, that's kind of cool. There you get a proper dead pedal. This is the electric parking brake. These are the controls for the headlights. It gets a knee airbag as well, saying airbag right there. Door pockets are big enough at the front. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. Nice controls again. This is very floating. Press this button to retract the sun blind. There you can see it is actually going down. See, it's actually very comfortable, but I really don't like this treatment. Obviously, in the AMG line, you get sort of a carbon fiber finish on the dashboard. The steering wheel is also different, sort of an AMG steering wheel with piano black finishing, flat bottom and the likes. Okay, let's do one thing. Let me actually use the memory seats. Both the front seats get memory function. You can actually save up to three people settings. I press this one button and there, you see, this is going inside because the steering wheel is also electrically adjustable. There the seat is going ahead. And then under thigh support is not a problem because this can actually, okay, there you can see the steering is rising and all. So that's a nice thing that the steering is electrically adjustable, that the seat is actually coming forward. Everything is electrically adjustable here, including the under thigh support, as well as the headrest, which is usually not the case. 
in fact i'll show you that under thigh support can be adjusted there yep electrically you can adjust the under thigh support how cool is that that's something which is really very nice but plenty of hard plastics okay all hard plastics lower down now how do you realize that this is not the s class and this is the c class well because the vents are circular in the s class obviously they are sort of rectangular let's shut this for a moment glove box is decent size you have a compartment here on the top and this is lockable but lot of hard plastics now the thing is when you unlock the car and get inside the blower automatically turns on that is crazy attention to detail and that's even before the car turns on and then it has a nice graphic here a nice graphic there when you turn off the car again beautiful graphics it says mercedes here on the windscreen the wipers work really well look at the amount of spray on offer you can actually take a bath i kid you not i gone to a restaurant my hands were dirty i put my hand in because of the soap water my hands got clean in no time at all auto dimming of course sort of frameless it obviously gets connected car tech with lot of features and here you get a mirror you get a light same is the case here as well a mirror and a light as well steering feels nice to hold these are the controls for the cruise control system these are for the audio system and this is also to browse through this instrument cluster which happens to be a 12.3 inch unit which is very nice fantastic in fact but you know what the s class has more options here of course and then you can get into the various menus navigation one looks fantastic everything is really crisp inside this car okay i like this understated one and then obviously you get plenty of information here like it's a information overload the only problem here is that these buttons are not so good to use so they should have had physical control sometimes what happens by mistake i keep pressing this button and you know this thing keeps changing i don't do it consciously when just turning the car or turning the steering wheel it happens many a times in fact if you notice there's a fuel meter here there's no temperature meter why because a temperature meter comes right here which tells you when the engine is cold and that light then actually goes away now this is fantastic 11.9 inch portrait display amazing quality and the whole you know ui is similar to the one on the s class here i get into ambient lighting there are 64 colors for the ambient lighting ambient lighting is absolutely fantastic here this is very nice to operate and then in comfort you also get seat kinetic so it doesn't get ventilation function doesn't get massage or anything of that sort but it's got a jugadu you know sort of a massage known as seat kinetics which moves the seat just to sort of give you a massage easy to operate here you get into this various functions and then you know these are for the drive mode selector this is for the camera system it has got automatic parking as well which actually works surprisingly well i did not expect it to work that well and this is obviously the camera we've got multiple modes now because it's got parking sensors both at the front as well as the rear well it is a boon when parking the car now let's get out of this dual zone climate control air conditioning system again everything is touch but this is very nice to use not bad at all like i thought you know having touch everywhere would be bad there's a fingerprint sensor here so that you can save your own settings and all that stuff and this is the volume control and all that stuff this is the engine start button this is the stop start system fantastic like really amazing how mercedes benz has been able to do it in fact the attention to detail is so freaking crazy that when i increase the temperature na this thing becomes red and when you decrease the temperature it actually becomes blue really nice air conditioning is an absolute chiller and again this is sort of a touch sensitive control to open the sunroof which is also big enough that it brings in a lot of airy feeling inside the cabin i'm just going to push it once again now well, that's about it that's the maximum it opens it doesn't open any further but the problem is now it doesn't have much space at the rear audio quality is absolutely fantastic obviously it has to be so let's do one thing let's actually get into radio and play it really nice audio quality fantastic it's also got voice commands hey mercedes how can i help engine data there comes the engine data vehicle data consumption data and all that stuff which you will use when we are driving the car piano black finishing here you got twin cup holders you've got some storage space here one usb c charging socket there is a wireless charging pad as well below here you get two usb c charging sockets but there's no regular usb which is not needed because everything is got the usb c almost overall quality of the cabin is nice door also shuts with a nice rear showing feel let's do one thing let's actually turn off the car there it shows you the mercedes benz logo everything is turned off let's get outside okay doors feel a bit on the heavier side but you know what there's no keyless entry which is very shocking you know because come on at this price you would expect that you come to the car put your hand without removing the key and it unlocks no it doesn't happen mirrors will go inside when i obviously you know uh, lock the car and here all the windows roll down even the sunroof opens when i yeah use the key by keeping this button press so that's a feature which you obviously expect from a car this expensive but for the price certainly i expected a lot more specifically speaking keyless entry and ventilated seats should have been offered let's do one thing let's start driving right away
all right we're all set to go which means changing the drive mode to sport right now and we are going to turn off the air conditioning of course which is very important we also get into the car setting here and then we get into manual mode and we turn esp off yeah esp off in this rainy climate am i mad or something probably yes and there here we are going to get into info we are going to get into vehicle which will show how much accelerator and brake is being applied we get into drive mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator driving the motor hazards off huh there we have reached 100 km per hour even on a wet road with traction control off according to the system nothing happens you know why because traction control only goes to sport it does not turn off here now this is the c200 petrol which is powered by a 1.5 liter petrol engine which might seem a bit low in terms of displacement but thanks to mild hybrid tech it has got some amount of oomph in fact the battery gives it 20 horsepower and 200 newton meters resulting in great drivability lack of low end turbo lag in fact turbo lag is well contained throughout the rev range and then you know get on the throttle there is an immediate response in the lower end of the rev range which is quite nice but the problem is it's a low displacement engine that's the reason the mid range is kind of flat doesn't feel that enthusiastic in the mid range somehow and in the top end it pulls nicely and strongly but red lines very early around 6100 rpm so i think in first it red lines at 6000 rpm and then for other gears it red lines at just 6100 rpm which is very less a red line yeah crazy low now this engine actually produces 204 horsepower which is decent enough and the torque output is 300 newton meters oh my god it's kind of dry here performance i would say gets the job done 0 to 100 km per hour takes 7.3 seconds as per the claim from mercedes benz you have to actually angle it over speed breakers because yeah it does tend to you know touch speed breakers so ground clearance is on the lower side engine does rev fast but it gets very noisy and vocal past 4000 rpm so yeah it's actually a bit too vocal insulation is fine but it becomes vocal because this engine is a bit too enthusiastic in the higher end of the rev range overall performance is more than adequate in fact on part throttle this engine behaves really very nicely you don't realize it has a chindum into 1.5 liter engine but then when you drive it flat out you do realize that it could do with a little bit more grunt the problem is that the diesel is so fantastic now you're like mm, petrol just doesn't excite me as much and then this gearbox is a 9 speed torque converter unit which is not the fastest with shifts you obviously have have paddle shifters but you can't do manual control of things even though you have a manual mode here but it will just upshift once it reaches the red line so that's a bit disappointing or else the gear shifts happen quick enough only thing is this gearbox is not that alert to give you the right shifts at most of the times and then <laughs> you know what the driving position such as it's actually a very fun car to drive i wish they had a bigger engine with more power but now obviously we are going to get the 2 liter engine in the amg yeah downsizing has really hit this car hard and there's a bottle we managed to avoid that so the thing is that when you get into manual mode it will hold on to a gas slightly longer as well and that's the only real difference which you find by engaging the manual mode when you go here that is and uh, using the paddles for a downshift is the only benefit at times otherwise these paddles are not of much use as such now there are four driving modes on offer there is eco which obviously is eco friendly driving in the sense that it reduces the oom from the car to boost the fuel efficiency of the vehicle then there is comfort which is like a middle ground between economy and sorry efficiency and sport mode you can say economy efficiency whatever you want and there is sport obviously there's third mode there's no sport plus here and there is an individual mode which lets you configure the three parameters which can be changed in this car which is the engine or drivetrain between comfort eco and sport and the other two parameters happen to be you guessed it right one is obviously the traction control system you can configure that as well so here if i get into the setting right there and i can get it to i and then i can decide i want to configure stuff yeah the steering is the other thing which i can configure and the steering and the traction control or rather esp electronic stability program can be configured in two ways comfort or sport that's about it so not really many options as such and globally obviously this car comes with a lot more features and tech including the option of rear wheel steering which we do not have here now compared to the diesel the suspension is on the softer side because the engine is lower in terms of weight so they didn't have to stiffen up things here resulting in an even better ride only thing at high speeds this car does have a tendency to move about a bit vertically that is which the diesel doesn't have the diesel feels more tied down to the road but overall ride is also better the thing is when i'm comparing this to the c300d that one runs on bigger wheels with lower profile tires this one is having smaller wheels with higher profile tires and that extra cushion really helps in making the ride 
unbelievably good like the ride is fantastic here and this engine well keeping in on the boiling end of the rev range results in around 6 to 7 kilometers per liter fuel efficiency you know what most people are going to end up buying the diesel the c200d sorry the c220d is going to be the most popular of the c-class lineup because obviously diesel efficiency and more attractive pricing when compared to the c300d now obviously this car has got adas functions like active brake assist but because we are in manual mode it's just showing me that you know it is not going to actually activate it so we are just going to come to the car button here and we are going to turn on okay yes we already turned on then what is the problem why was it not giving me the warning maybe in uh, this particular mode which you are driving in right now it does not do that so we're going to get into comfort here onto the throttle yeah that light is coming but it's not yet yeah it's not blink you know it's such a weird system yeah at times it just kicks in when it should not and when it should it doesn't kick in at all so i don't really like this whole active brake system to be honest it was good in some earlier mercedes cars but now they've tweaked it so much now that it's over a lot at times something is coming from here and all of a sudden it breaks and kind of give you a heart attack only so a little bit too alert a system but not really needed i don't like it to be very honest and uh, yeah what am i doing we are actually going to get it into sport mode because i think sport mode is the best to drive because it gives you all the performance which you're looking for this car will easily hit 220 kilometers per hour aerodynamic efficiency is also very nice brake performance is good only thing is that pedal doesn't have a very nice flow to it so here you know initially it lacks the bite and then it grabs very suddenly so they could have really modulated the pedal a lot better for better braking performance we're going to come to a halt here i'm just going to change the instrument cluster mode to this sport one only two of these are actually nice and we are actually going to come into sport mode okay turn off the stop start system and here we get into the car mode manual shifting on esp off and we get back we get into the info mode we actually turn on the engine data revving the motor hazard lights off Handling is actually quite nice, okay? The steering is fantastic. It has a lot of feel. It has good feedback as well. Very direct and you know where you're pointing to. Obviously, power is being channeled to the rear wheels, but the car really goes in the direction you want it to go to. Obviously, some want a body roll when compared to the diesel because of the softness here and there. But the steering is fantastic. The ride and handling balance is also very good. But trust me, you need to pay that 2.6 lakhs extra to opt for the C220D because the diesel engine is just so much better in terms of efficiency. In fact, one of the most efficient Mercedes cars in india ARI is around 23 something something yeah 23 something something kilometers per liter because obviously mild hybrid really works well with a diesel engine even better actually this one returns somewhere between 6 to 12 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style rev it completely like a madman like i'm doing right now 6 kilometers per liter drive it sedately on the highway 12 to 13 kilometers per liter because ARI numbers are only 16 point something something kilometers per liter so not the most efficient as such but hey a diesel is just so much better in the real world a diesel will return around 14 to 18 kilometers per liter that is the level of efficiency it has to offer there okay it will first sound it and then it will automatically break by the way the price of this car is 65.28 lakh rupees and the rain is so on and off oh my god what has happened to the road it's kind of destructed already and here around the corners just look at the freaking balance it really holds its line beautifully well but if you're looking to buy a mercedes c-class this is the variant to buy because the c300d not only has the best performance amongst all the other options available in the c-class lineup it also looks the best and has the most features because this obviously comes in amg line you know what i'm talking about this is in eco mode the pull unbelievably awesome isn't it so obviously you have to compromise on the ride quality now there are two diesel engines on offer and you can get any of the diesels because a diesel is a diesel is a diesel is a diesel but the c300d offers you a lot more so what you're going to do we're going to stop here we're going to launch it aggressively because last time when i drove it in the hills i could not really extract all those 261 horsepowers from this car ah, brakes are so nice but there's a problem so first things first we're going to get out of this map view let me get is into sport mode and we are actually going to get into seeing some information but this info is not as good as the older mercedes cars we are going to get the cluster into sport display as well traction control we will turn off which means we have to go back and then we get into this car button we press esp off let me get into manual mode for the gear shift as well manual okay left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard light off revving the motor
एक्सेलरेशन इज अनबिलीवेबल फॉर वॉट इज अ टू लीटर फोर सिलेंडर डीजल इंजन एक्चुअली द टू ट्वेंटी डी एंड द थ्री हंड्रेड डी हैव द एक्जैक्ट सेम इंजन ओनली थिंग इज द ट्यून इज डिफरेंट हेयर सो दिस वन एक्चुअली प्रोड्यूसिज टू हंड एंड सिक्सटी वन हॉर्स पावर इन द टॉक आउटपुट इज सुपर इंप्रेसिव एट फाइव फिफ्टी न्यूटन मीटर्स बट दैट्स जस्ट हाफ द स्टोरी द अदर हाफ इज द माइल्ड हाइब्रिड सिस्टम बिकॉज इट गेट्स अ फोर्टी एट वर्ल्ड इंटीग्रेटेड स्टार्टर जनरेटर विच रिजल्ट इन ट्वेंटी हॉर्स पावर एंड टू हंड्रेड न्यूटन मीटर्स ऑफ एडिशनल थ्रस्ट एट सर्टन आर पी एम सो यू कैंट रियली कैलकुलेट बोथ ऑफ दम एंड एट दम ऑफ एंड बी लाइक यू नो वॉट माई सी क्लास इज प्रोड्यूसिंग सेवन फिफ्टी न्यूटन मीटर्स ऑफ टॉक एम जी इंजीनियर्स विल शूट दम सेल्स सो परफॉर्मेंस इज बेस्ट बिकॉज दिस कार गोसम जीरो टू हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स पर आवर इन जस्ट फाइव पॉइंट सेवन सेकेंड्स टर्बो लाइक इज इन रियली देर एज सच बट इट्स नॉट वेरी स्पाइक या पावर डिलीवरी बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली ना विद द न्यू इमिशन नॉर्म्स दे किल्ड ऑफ दैट इनिशियल ग्रंट बट मीड रेंज इज सुपर डुपर स्ट्रॉग एंड द मोटर इज सुपर रिफ एंड यू कैन रियली हेयर मच इन साइड द कैबिन बट यू नो वॉट इन स्पाइट ऑफ द रिफाइनमेंट ऑफ दिस मोटर नियर द टॉप एंड ऑफ द रेव रेंज इट मेक सम स्लाइट अमाउंट ऑफ साउंड एज वेल नो हेयर इज द प्रॉब्लम ओके ओवर स्पीड ब्रेकर्स यू हैव टू बी रियली वेरी केयरफुल बिकॉज द एम जी लाइन हैज अ लोअर ग्राउंड क्लेंस एंड टेंस टू स्क्रेप इन फैक्ट इन द पास थ्री फोर डेज आई बीन ड्राइविंग दिस कार I might have scraped it around 407 times already so that's a bit worrisome yeah when you are in sport mode now the traction control system becomes little less intrusive and there's no sport plus as such there actually four drive mode and manual shifting is not really helping the course here i'm making a downshift let's see what happens now it will not hold on to a gear even a normal maruti car with the regular amt gearbox holds on to a gear so this is something which i want mercedes to change let us hold on to a gear and i don't like this display as much as i like the classic one because i can see the tachometer properly there so let's do one thing let's get into the info mode so although these screens which are inspired from the big daddy s class this one as well as this one is awesome obviously very good in terms of visibility some of the graphics aren't as good as the ones which we used to see earlier now fuel efficiency is 20.37 kilometers per liter which is the claimed mileage by ara and the real world you will get somewhere around 12 to 16 kilometers per liter depending on where you are driving there is not a single point in the rev range where this car is not excited enough to jump ahead it really pulls strongly that you wonder is there a 2 liter engine ahead or is there a 3 liter you don't really miss a 6 cylinder unit but a 6 cylinder unit would be extremely more refined as well and then becomes i mean then comes the bigger problem which i have always said the m340i because you pay slightly more and then you get 6 cylinders and then you get all wheel drive all the all wheel drive is sh but you know what real wheel drive option is also available but not in india and then you can you know hack the system and just make it real wheel drive but that's still not figured out yet but a bmw 3 series is still more dynamic although with this amg line trim with you know lower profile tires bigger wheels and all that stuff this car certainly handles quite well in fact it handles better than the c200 the petrol version which we were reviewing earlier it does ride slightly stiffer because of the low profile tires and overall i would say comfort level is a nice but that mercedes low level low speed comfort comfort is missing in this car wherein you expect it to glide smoothly on the worst of roads well that's kind of lacking here so slow i mean low speed ride is actually on the stiffer side but i love the grunt i love how you can have fun yet not <laughs> empty your wallet because of the kind of efficiency all thanks to mild hybrid and i personally believe that diesel hybrid is a way forward because the level of efficiency you can get nothing even comes close you can hear a bit of the road noise as well so yeah i think these 18 inch low profile tires are not really suited to indian conditions and even this low ground clearance is not suited yeah i know it looks very nice and all that stuff handling is good steering is fantastic obviously as usual the case mercedes is doing a fab job there because it's very direct it offers good amount of feel and feedback but yeah usability is a bit of a problem with this car because of the low profile tires and the ground clearance like normal speed breakers i'm scraping i'm like wondering what is happening and why is that happening is because of the amg line the body kit okay now brakes are nice but you know what that initial bite is very soft and then all of a sudden it grabs so it's not very progressive in that regard and off we go yeah wheel spin because rear wheel drive is just rear wheel drive Now compared to the C two twenty D, you're paying six lakhs more. What do you get for six lakhs more? Sixty four more horsepower, hundred and ten newton meters more torque, zero to hundred kilometers per hour timing cut by one point six seconds, fuel efficiency decreased by two point six three kilometers per liter, and top speed increased by five kilometers per hour. This car has a top speed of two hundred fifty kilometers per hour, but honestly, now that is kind of useless because uh, firstly, where will you drive at that speed? And secondly, that is limited. Okay, this car is more capable than that. It's really very quick. It's a absolute monster fun machine. 
but for 5.75 lakhs more you get the M340i so I'm worried that should I get the practicality of a diesel or should I get the madness of a BMW 340i because trust me that car with its six cylinder engine and that sound is very practical and usable as well so that's the kind of confusion but trust me if you're looking to buy a c-class this is the one to get it offers you everything you're looking for the c300d looks better has more kit as well for the additional six lakhs you pay when compared to the c220d and yeah all the safety features which you would expect there you can see that triangle is also coming okay now the interesting thing which nore noticed is it has ECSI. These are the drive modes. I is obviously individual, and you can obviously tweak only three things, which is the engine, the steering wheel, and the ESP system. No adaptive dampers here. But Nuren is like, what is this? Is this E class mode, C class mode, and S class mode in this car? So that's a nice observation. Uh, it's not that. E is for economy, C is for comfort, S that. is for sport. I'm not telling you. I'm just saying. So guys, this is my vlog of the Mercedes C class. I know it's a very long vlog, but uh, I just wanted to drive the C300D again and show you what a brutal, crazy acceleration it has in fact right now i've just left the accelerator completely no brakes nothing there zero rpm because it's on hybrid mode eq boost for the win it kicks in <laughs> it ensures that you know it goes more kilometers per liter this is the solution to global warming greta thunberg if you're looking to buy an efficient car get the c300d at least you'll have a smile on your face which i've never seen in I mean, I've never seen you smile ever. You would start smiling when you drive the C300E. It is such a fantastic machine. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good that we have to stop again and launch one last time. I love this car. I absolutely love it. But I just don't understand, for this price, 73.88 lakhs, I expected ventilated seats. I expected rear wheel steering. At least as an option, so they didn't have But rear wheel steering is not available at all. It's not available, so that's a bit of a bummer. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's stop here and launch. Let's get into consumption data because we can. And now, okay, I'm going to launch it as aggressive as possible. So we get into sport drive mode and I'm going to turn off the traction control. One button now would have been really nice and helpful. So ESP off. Don't know why manual shifting does not work. It should hold on to again. Now, come on. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor. <laughs> I have always dreamt of a diesel hybrid and finally the dream has come true. Bye-bye.